stand together. Come, let us worship our King. Oh, come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Yeah. Oh, see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Here we go, come on. Second verse. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. Yeah. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Hey. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. Yeah. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, I'll say, lift it high, oh, God. I've done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you come. That's it. You free, be captive, and break every chain. You know? hey. You have, come on, that's a little bit. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, you have done great things. So oh God, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. He speaks and it is done. He commands and it stands firm. Did you hear that? He speaks and it is done. He commands and it stands firm. Rest in him today. Rest in him, brothers and sisters. Amen. All right thing about that song I don't want it to make us liars it says we dance in your freedom and so I feel like I feel the need to dance a little bit there so anyway welcome welcome to worship everybody I hope everything we do today from beginning to end helps you connect with our God amen, amen. even if it's just a whisper from him that he whispers to you and say you are my child and I love you amen, amen. all right welcome hopefully you checked in today um, to let us know uh, that you're worshiping with us. If you're watching online, welcome. We pray that you're able to stand when we say stand and sing along and read along and join us in worship. Amen. 
All right, today we're going to do a call to worship that's a responsive reading. Um, and so read out loud, okay? There'll be a place for you. It's, it either says congregation or it says all. Okay? Is that easy enough? All right, here we go. I, I will start. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. God reigns over the nations. God is exalted over all. Praise the Lord, all people. Praise God's everlasting name. Let, Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth to hear him. Amen. I search the world. It couldn't fill me. empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough yeah. then you came along yeah. and put me back together thank you God and every desire is now satisfied here in your love like this right here. Oh, there's nothing ah, better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, but you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Yeah, thank God for that. Come on, because the God of the mountain yeah, is the God of the valley. There's not a place. Your mercy and grace won't find me again.
Let me go. You turn great. That's it. You turn bones.
Take the words of this song this morning and just say a prayer back to God this morning. You come, O oh God, flood our hearts, flood into our thirsty hearts, hungry hearts. We need more of you, God. We need more of your presence in our lives. We're hungry for you. Let your glory fall on us. God, keep us from just going through the motions. Surprise us with your presence. This is our prayer today. God, we lift up our kids to you, our children, as they go back to school this week. God, I know that there's a lot of angst, both in, in the hearts of parents and even in the kids' hearts. God, that you will calm their hearts. And God, that this will be a, a good transition as they deal with masks and no masks and people who are vaccinated, those who are not vaccinated. God, we just... We just ask you, God, for your peace, for your shalom in our homes, in our schools, in the hearts of our children. This is our prayer today. We pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say, amen, amen, amen. Maybe seated for a while. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Randy Fishback. It's my privilege to direct the Compassion, Justice, and Missions Ministries of this church and to be up here this up front this morning bringing you community life. But before I do that, I really like to throw a wrench in the works, especially when Daniel's not expecting it. So um, we're going to go off script because somebody has a birthday on Tuesday. And um, so we're going to sing as rousingly as you can. Thank you. Katie. Happy birthday to you. You know, you know, somebody needs to reinvent that song because after that, after those worship songs and the, the groove and everything, we just break into that. It's just like, oh, it's tragic. But anyway, happy birthday, brother. And those of you at home, we know that right now you could get up and get a slice of cake and we can't right here. So uh, just be right back. Um, community life. What's happening here in the life at, Hill, at our lives here at Hillside? Well, next week, our um, children's program kicks back into gear with Cave Quest. So kids nursery to fifth grade will be joining Terry Hawkinson right over there in the doorway for Cave Quest. They're, the program, I, I see that kid back there going, yeah, I'm so excited. Um, so that'll be downstairs. It'll be at both hours. Um, you'll stay for the first few minutes and worship here and then go down there and go spelunking and all those things you do in caves. And I think our insurance at the church is way up to date because this includes toddlers. So, you know, I'm not sure they spelunk very well. I'm, I'm not sure I speak on very well, but um, anyway, starting next week, full program, and we just uh, welcome everybody to join that uh, with your kids. Um, and then what else is happening? I bring a compassion, justice, and missions um, spotlight periodically, and I'm going to do that again this morning. Um, and usually we talk about the ministry side of that, which is, you know, prison ministry and vulnerable children and anti-trafficking and 
uh, uh, recovery, things like that. This morning we're going to talk about kind of the other side of the shop, which is our mission partnerships. We have six missionary couples that we support globally and five more people that we support in the state of California on campuses and things like that. We support those people directly. Now we support more by giving money through the Evangelical Covenant Church, but we support those 11 groups or families or whatever directly. And this morning, um, the Livingstons, Sam and Helen, have brought us a video greeting. Uh, they used to attend this church about a dozen years ago, but I don't want to steal their thunder. They're going to talk. So why don't we roll this from the Livingstons in Taiwan, whom we support directly. Hi, Hillsiders. It's Sam and Helen here. We're just coming into our apartment. My, does time fly. It's been over 12 years since we were Hillsiders with you all in Walnut Creek. So, yeah, Helen wanted to say something. Oh, well, I wanted to share a picture of what Nathan and Joy looks like when we were at Hillside and I was a faithful MOPS member. And now look at them. We just celebrated Nathan's 17th birthday. I fully, look at this. We just had a big party because he has had such a hard year with all of his accidents and things. So anyhow, all of our hearts need recovery and we're grateful to do the work of recovery, aren't we? Yeah. And yeah. Um, we're so hopeful for the year 2021 and that God has great things um, in store for, for us here in Taiwan and for you guys in Walnut Creek. And we're just grateful that you've come alongside our journey. Thank you. And we're going to show you our kids. They're waiting outside to give you a quick tour of our apartment building. That's so how we got here. Let's take a look. Go. Hi, Hillsiders. So welcome to Taiwan. Here's what I, where I live. Um, and here's our apartment building. We live up there on the fourth floor. There it is. And uh, we'll see, you know, I'm just Gracie over here. OK, hi, guys. I'm Grace. I'm a sixth grader. And I'm 11 years old. And this is the entrance to our house. So we don't have a front or a backyard. This is just where they park their scooters. And uh, I'm going to lead it to Joy. Hand it to Joy. Hi, I'm Joy. I'm 15 this year, and I'm a sophomore in high school. And this is our entrance to our apartment building. I really enjoyed serving at Hillside during the summer and serving at the VBS. That was probably my only time serving, but I really enjoyed it. Hi, I'm Nathan, I'm 16, and these are our bikes. This is where I park my bike. I really appreciate all the prayers for my uh, bike accident. I'm recovering okay. And um, yeah, I'm really thankful for all the help you guys provide to our family. Hey, check this out. We're about to kick off a Taiwan Sunshine event here. It's called I'm a Heroes Game, pairing up children from Morrison Academy or whichever school in the community and then pairing them up with Taizong Special Ed um, School. About 80 students here today competing in, a, in various track and field events to say, yay, you can do this rather than um, being always set aside saying, well, they don't run as fast as the others. So, yay, such a fun day. Just want to take you along. It's always great to hear from one of our partners abroad. So we want to remember to pray for the living sins, and we're going to do that in just a minute. But the kids, you guys can go now. We send you with our blessings. We hope you hear a lot about Jesus. And next week, bring your climbing gear. All right, so um, I think you guys know the ways to give at Hillside. You can leave an offering here in one of the designated uh, basket locations. You can give online at the website, or you can use the Church Center app. So let's pray for this morning's gifts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our um, missionaries abroad, Lord. We thank you for this little glimpse into the Livingstons and, and how they're doing. Uh, 
They've asked for prayer for um, the COVID situation in Taiwan. They've also asked for prayer with their um, uh, ministry to special needs children. And Lord, we pray for them today. We pray for uh, Sam and Helen and the four kids. And we just pray that you're blessing them, that they could sense our lifting them up as a hillside um, body right now and that they would be encouraged and blessed by that. And so, Lord, we give you these gifts this morning um, to do your work not only here at this church and in, and in this community, but also around the world through these many dear um, and dedicated servants of yours. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All the poor and powerless And all the lost and lonely And all the thieves will come confess And know that you are holy Know that you are holy hearts who are content and all who feel unworthy and all who hurt with nothing left will know that you are holy and all who will sing out hallelujah from the mountain go on and tell it to the masses that he is God oh shout it go on and scream it from the mountain
Have a seat. Yeah, you can thank the band. Oh, good morning to you. I'm Dan Seitz, senior pastor here at Hillside. It is a joy to see your faces, at least the half that I can see. It really is. I can see you smiling with your eyes, and it's uh, great to be here together. As you know very, very well, one of the reasons that it is such a gift to live where we live in the East Bay is all the parks and all the open spaces, and all the shorelines, and all the trails that we have. And I genuinely wish everyone throughout the world had what we have here in the East Bay, all this space to uh, explore. And recently I learned that our own East Bay Park District operates the largest regional park network in the entire United States. Isn't that amazing? 73 parks covering almost 125,000 acres and crisscrossed with 1,300 miles of hiking trails. And our parks contain all sorts of surprises too, including an abandoned coal mine. Did you know that? A farm, a large stand of coastal redwood, and even an extinct volcano. So wear a helmet if the ground starts to rumble, okay? So again, if you have one of those cool red East Bay Park District shirts, wear it with pride. But so far, the trail that I'm most thankful for is the Lafayette Moraga Trail. And it is the perfect place, so convenient uh, for my three or four runs a week, which frankly, I need to manage my stress, otherwise I become a Sasquatch at home. And uh, I wonder if some of you can relate. But anyway, if you've ever run or biked that trail, you know that about a mile in from the, La- from the Olympic Avenue staging area, on the left is a tree that you cannot miss. And that's because this tree is decorated with something like 100 birdhouses. Have you ever seen this? And uh, for weeks when I would run by that tree, which Google Maps has tagged as a cultural landmark. Go Lafayette, huh? Something would ping in my mind. Every time I'd go by and I would see it and enjoy it and something would flash in my head and I wasn't sure totally what it was. But before long, it finally dawned on me that one tree, one tree, filled with numerous birdhouses is a picture of one of my supreme dreams for this church that we are all in together. And the dream is this, that every single hillsider would have a home in a small group. That we would be, as a church, one tree and numerous birdhouses. Let me expand on it a little bit. My dream that if that you, if you are here in this service right now, whether you have been here for 30 years, and some of you have, or whether you've only been here for 30 minutes, would find a home in a small group of fellow hillsiders. Or that you, if you are participating in this service online, even today, that you too would find a home with a small group of hillsiders. And to put it even more expansively, my dream, that every hillsider from about sixth grade on up, maybe even younger, would be nested in a small band of fellow hillsiders with whom they do three things. They develop deep and enduring relationships. Two, they take in God's word into their innermost selves. And thirdly, 
They seek after King Jesus, the reigning Lord's specific leading. And I want to offer this to you as a rallying cry for Hillside. You ready? Something that we can say to each other over and over again as the year, in the years ahead, a birdhouse for every bird. Do you like it? I like it. Why are groups so important? Why are they so central? And again, by group, we mean something very specific. Small platoons of hillsiders that meet consistently for friendship building. I mean, really getting to know each other and becoming friends, immersion in scripture, and then trying to figure out together through various interactive activities how the Lord is leading. Why should a birdhouse for every bird be a rallying cry for us at Hillside? Why should we make a shift and begin to see the small group, not as an added extra, but as a fundamental hillside gathering for everyone? You could even say the twin brother of uh, the worship service. And again, not necessarily happening at all times throughout the year, but in consistent cycles. Why should that be so important? Why should we make that shift? Well, you might remember that a couple of months ago, I pitched another one of these mind frame pivots to you. And I challenged us as a church family, as a community of believers, to mothball the term volunteer. Do you remember that from about six weeks ago? And to review, that was because people who serve in ministry here at Hillside Covenant Church, whether by managing the budget or visiting the sick or Hatching a marketing plan, which people are doing right now, by the way, or greeting people on Sunday mornings, or serving on respite days, or planning a men's retreat, or organizing the next San Quentin visit, or editing Magi scripts, or prepping food bags for hungry seniors in Walnut Creek, or setting up the bridge, or teaching seminary for everyone, or decorating downstairs to look like a cave. These people are not volunteers. That term is 10 times too weak. It's like calling Mount Diablo a hill, that that little rise over there. It's so much more than that. No, these hillsiders, they're not volunteers. Rather, they are agents of the reigning king of all, doing the new creation construction, the tasks of justice and mercy and love for which they were brought from death to life by the king himself. And hillsiders who work to keep our flock together, say, by serving Mr. Jane's calling team, they're not volunteering. They are living the reason for their in Christ existence. And volunteer just can't capture the dignity the importance of ministry in the church, which is why the staff and I are inviting us all to scrap the term and instead use ministry leader or ministry team member or even just team member instead. And I'm happy with the way the language is catching on. By the way, regarding the ministry teams of our church, next week we're going to announce the final Project 404 Counts. And we're going to see how many of the 404 distinct ministry roles that make us who we are at Hillside have been claimed by a Hillsider. And we're going to see whether we're going into this new ministry year that is so full of promise, whether we're going into it with full strength or something less than that. And it's not too late to jump in. You have a white card on your seat. And, you know, if you're watching from home, and you can't get a white card. I, wanna, I have an invitation for you. Call the church. Email any staff person. Tell that staff person what role it is that you want. And that staff person will fill out the card for you. And just so that we're on the same page, we want you to sign a white card to commit to ministry. If it's a new ministry that you're just jumping into for this next year, or it's one that you're already in and you want to continue, all right? We want an accurate account. But to return to the point, why make a similar mental shift with respect to groups? Why begin as a church family to begin to think about groups differently? It's not something that's just one thing that people might choose to do at Hillside, but it's something that's really fundamental. You could put it this way. Why begin seeing group commitment not as an optional side dish, like the delicious mac and cheese at Chick-fil-A, 
but the chicken sandwich itself. Okay, why? Many reasons. I actually had trouble boiling them down to three, but I'm going to give you three first. Without consistent group involvement, without a birdhouse for every bird here at Hillside, many of us will simply struggle to develop deep relationships with our fellow Hillsiders. This is just reality. You know, true friendships are plants that require a particular kind of soil in which to grow. Now, worship service attendance is critical for spiritual transformation because worship is central for spiritual transformation. We need to gaze upon God, look at him to experience his transforming work. However, worship service attendance doesn't lend itself for most people to the development of deep friendships. And the obvious reason is that the conversations that we have in and around here on a Sunday morning are basically shallow. Now, don't get me wrong. We need shallow conversations. Shallow conversations are extremely valuable, and we all ought to be very skilled at shallow conversations. Think about it. In a shallow conversation, a quick flyby conversation, say here at Hillside, you know what we can do? We can express notice. We can say, I see you. And we can express welcome. That goes right into the heart. We can say, I am glad that you are here. And lastly, we can express appreciation. Just in a flyby, we can say, you're important. You're important to me and you're important to this church. Your presence here matters. But by definition, shallow conversations are not deep conversations. And deep conversations, conversations that are characterized by growing honesty and vulnerability and a growing knowledge of who that person is and growing knowledge for that person of knowing who we are, that's the path to deep friendship. And it can't happen just on an ordinary Sunday morning. Here's the second reason. Without consistent group involvement, without a birdhouse for every bird, you're coming along, many of us will struggle to know who to love. And let me explain what I mean by that. One of our most fundamental responsibilities as apprentices of Jesus which is what we are here at Hillside, people who are trying to learn to do the things that Jesus did and taught. One of our most fundamental responsibilities, one of our most fundamental callings is to love our fellow believers, to love our brothers and sisters in this family. Now, we are to love everyone without question. The New Testament is plain about that. We're to love the world. But the Bible is also plain that we're to devote special love, special tenderness, special connection to our fellow Christians. And you might think, is that right? Is that true? The New Testament is unembarrassed to say so. It's clear and emphatic. Listen to Galatians 6.10. Paul says, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, everyone throughout the world. But then listen to what he says, especially to those in the family of faith. That's us. 1 John 3.11 for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. The context is very plain. If you read First John, he's talking about the one another refers to the family, the church family. First Peter 2.17 puts it most simply of all, very powerfully. It says, love the family of believers. The early Christians made love for each other. A top priority, Acts 2.42 says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They came to hear the word of God. But what else did they devote themselves to? The fellowship. Koinonia in Greek, the family, relationship, love and connection. Now, what's important to note is that the kind of love that the Bible's talking about, the special kind of love that's to characterize the family of God, is action. The kind of love that's supposed to characterize the people of God and demonstrate to everybody watching that there's a new king on the throne, there's a whole new reality at play in the world, is practical. It's more than a thought. 
It's more than a disposition of mind. Listen to what the Apostle John says about the particular kind of love that should characterize we Christians with other Christians. This is my favorite verses. He says, Dear children, let us love not with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. In other words, Christian love is the love that provides meals when that brother or sister is sick or when that family just had the baby and tired out of their minds because the little squawker won't stop squawking. It's the kind of love that listens late in the night during times of heartbreak, which we all experience from time to time. It's the kind of love that heaves heavy boxes into the moving truck, whether or not pizza is provided, though it always should be, okay? What's the rub? From a practical perspective, think about it. From a practical perspective, none of us can show the kind of action-based love, at least in the degree to which it's necessary, for everyone in the community, even in a mid-sized church like ours. We are finite. We have other key life responsibilities like working, exercising, cleaning the gutters, helping the kids with the state report for Louisiana, volunteering for the swim team. These are all things God has called us to do, and they're important, and they have to fit in the schedule somehow. However, when we inhabit a birdhouse, you know what the benefit is? We know which birds we are to extend our wings for in blood, sweat, and tears service. At least we know who the main focus should be. You see, without having a nest, a tribe, a team, a platoon, we really don't have a place to focus our love as action energies. And in the attempt to do everything, sometimes we don't do anything at all. But if everyone at Hillside were in a group, what would we have? We'd all have a primary love target. And we'd all know whose needs we should throw ourselves into as a first priority. And who should it be? The other birds in our own birdhouse. Or to flip it around, we'd also know who we can count on on the day of trouble, when trouble eventually comes to us, when we say like birds do, slam right into the sliding glass window and end up stunned, right? <laughs> and finally, and perhaps most importantly, we should bring small groups to the center of our life together because without a birdhouse for every bird, we can't fulfill our mission. We really can't. Let me explain this way. We have a tremendous mission here at Hillside. It's a great mission that grows right out of the loamy soil of the Bible. Our mission as a church is to be light in the world. And that means that we exist, every single one of us here in the body, exists to reflect in all sorts of different ways, all sorts of different kinds of creative action, the invisible realities of the kingdom into the visible world through all sorts of different kinds of action. So we're to reflect the reality of the security of the kingdom. The fact that in the coming kingdom, everybody will be completely secure and safe from all harm. The health of the kingdom. In the coming kingdom, everybody will be completely healthy. There will be no illness of any kind. The abundance of the kingdom. The justice of the kingdom. There will be no bullies in God's new world. None. The beauty of the kingdom, again, into the visible world through all sorts of different kinds of creative actions. That's our mission. That's what it means to be light in the world. Well, let's think it through. Light bearing requires light bearers, which means something very specific. It means people who are inclined and equipped to bear light in the world, to do Jesus-like service in the world, which is always glorious, but honestly can be grueling as well. Light bearing requires light bearers, people whose inner selves have been and continue to be shaped according to a distinct pattern. Well, friends, becoming a light bearer, or to borrow language from the great 
Christian writer Dallas Willard, becoming a person whose inner being begins to take on the form of the inner being of Jesus himself requires something. Something more than just going through the motions at church. It requires shared life, organized around particular activities with other believers. See, there's, there's no other way. And you see, without deep and enduring friendships with other people, heart-to-heart connections, without meeting regularly with a group of trusted friends to think about and to practice the way of Jesus, you know what tends to happen? We tend to flounder in the spiritual sense. We, we, we tend to not progress in our teleos transformation. Teleos, you'll remember if you've been around here the last few weeks, is Greek, great Greek word, which means complete, equipped, even trained, so that we're ready and able to serve our king. In fact, the effects of groupless Christianity, solo Christianity, can be even worse than that. It can actually be even worse than remaining spiritually static. Recently, I stumbled across an interesting and actually kind of creepy article about the Wanangatta Valley of Southern Australia, not far from Melbourne. Can I just tell you this about this place? Don't go there. Please don't go there. At least don't go there alone because people keep vanishing when they hike there. Okay, it's true. I didn't make it up. And uh, it's probably not foul play, but authorities can't rule it out. And I have decided that if I ever go, which I don't intend to, but if I had to, say somebody forced me, I'm going to have Grant Freeman and Keon Amelie on my right and my left. But anyway, you know what I was thinking when I was reading that article? I had an insight, and it was this. You know, being a Christian outside the protective ring of a small group of trusted friends is like hiking in the Wanangatta Valley. (laughs) It's a very good way to go missing. It really is. It's a good way to vanish from the church. And it's a good way to never connect in the first place. To return to this article that I referenced, this journalist mentions uh, this mysterious and vaguely menacing figure known to live in this valley called the Button Man. This is true. Sounds like a Stephen King novel, but I'm telling you the truth. I read it. And according to reports, he approaches campers out in the bush, sometimes somewhat brusquely, and he asks them if they want to see his button collection. Nobody ever wants to see the button collection. Okay? Who knows what that means? And apparently, even though there's no evidence that this figure is anything other than a harmless eccentric Locals like to freak out tourists by warning them about the button man. Beware, mate, of the button man. Okay? I think they sell t-shirts that way as well. Now, why am I telling you this? Here's why. Although sophisticated East Bay Christians like ourselves are often embarrassed to talk about him, Jesus of Nazareth believed in a real button man. Someone who was a danger to believers hiking alone. And listen to Rick Warren on the danger of socially distanced Christianity. Straight on. He says, Satan loves detached believers, unplugged from the life of the body, isolated from God's family, and unaccountable to spiritual leaders because he knows they're defenseless and powerless against his tactics. And, you know, there may not be a real button man in the Australian outback. In fact, I'm sure there's not. But Scripture is plain. There is in the world. And, in fact, for me, that personal, celestial, supramundane evil lurks in the world, you know, bending institutions and destroying human beings, that's actually one of the easiest parts of Christianity for me to accept, not the hardest. Because all you have to do is sort of just look around. What's the point? By sticking together, committing to each other, joining in small bands for for friendship building, connecting, 
and consideration of Scripture. And then lastly, the third one is just as important, discerning how the living God in real time is leading us to respond. You know what that does, that corporate habit? It keeps us on the narrow path of joyful, freedom-giving change, which in the aggregate energizes us all for mission, which is the reason the church exists. And in case you're wondering, you know, a birdhouse for every bird, it's not actually something I made up this week. It's really not. It's not just my dream, my flight of fancy, you could say. This is the dream of our leaders. This is the dream of our council. This is the dream of the people who a couple of years ago worked together, met together, prayed together, and devised Hillside's Be Light in the World mission the G of which stands for what? Who remembers? Grow in community. We've established that this is a priority for us. This is a way of just living it out. Grow in community. Community is not the large group. It's not the group that we're enjoying right now, which is so important and which plays a critical role in our transformation and the advancement of our collective mission. Community is the small group small crowd, the group that's small enough for members to really engage in heart-to-heart practices that lead to heart of Jesus transformation. Well, what does this come down to? What are we asking you to do? Because I bet you feel that an ask is coming, and if you feel it, you're right. We are asking you, as Hillside leaders, to consider joining a Hillside small group for 10 weeks this fall, from the week of September 12th through November 14th. And we are inviting every hillsider to jump in. 10 weeks. For some of you, this will be an easy ask because you already have a group that you share life with. For others of you, on the other hand, this is a scary invitation. Because you're, you're not used to that kind of close connection. You want to stay in the shadows because it feels safe and comfortable. And I totally understand that. Nevertheless, we are asking you. We're inviting you to take the leap. To dip your toe into the pool of spiritual community. Put it another way, to begin hiking with others for just 10 weeks to see how it goes, to see what you experience. And thanks to God working in our midst right now and working through Project 404, you know what I really am happy to report? We have lots of hillside leaders who have presented themselves and are ready and able to lead groups. God's spirit has already moved in, and they've told Jenny Trees, I'll do it, I'll lead, put me to work. And thanks to them, we're also going to be able to offer a lot of options in terms of night of the week, regularity of meeting, whether live or on Zoom, God's already set the table for us. Now, let me be frank. You might already be in a group of some kind here at Hillside, and that is great. I, 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 we, we are so glad. Our, our groups are our strength here. But as a ministry staff, our preference, our dream for everyone here would be that everyone join one of our official 10-week, fall quarter, freshly assembled home groups, which will correspond with our message series from the Gospel of Luke, which will start September 12th, a series that I'm really excited about. It's all about Jesus in Galilee from Luke 4 through Luke 9, some of the best Jesus miracle stories and teaching stories um, in all the Gospels. And these groups are going to be using a curriculum that Peter Turry has written that is exceptional that is really well done, that's going to draw us deeper into God's Word, and is also actually, over on top of that, it's going to equip us to read the Gospels more effectively and more skillfully and for more spiritual nourishment than we ever have, because sometimes the Gospels can be a little bit tricky. So we're hoping that you'll jump in one of the new home groups, just for 10 weeks to see how it goes. You might meet new people. You will meet new people. You'll connect in two ways, new ways. Now, having said that, I want to be clear. We understand that might be too much for some of us, especially if 
we already serve on a ministry team that's, that's really time intensive, or if we're already heavily involved in another group, a Kairos group, a Spice group, a Well group, a Wednesday morning men's group, all of which are invaluable. I mean, critical ministries for Hillside. But for those of you who have the time or who would be excited about stretching yourselves in a new, new way this fall, just for 10 weeks, we would be thrilled if you would join one of our official newly constituted fall groups. Stick around. Stay in whatever other group you belong to. But jump into one of these. And the idea of a huge percentage of our church all cozily nested in a small group birdhouse, all studying the same scripture, all engaging in the same spiritual practices, it's just so exciting. And we as leaders sense that the spiritual force that would be unleashed through that synchronized movement could be, it could be catalytic for Hillside at a really important time in our church's history. Now, this group's pitch is going to raise questions. Some of them will be this. Can I form my own group? What if I have some ideas of people I'd like to be with? Uh, wh what if I, I can't get out of my house? What if I live at Rossmore and I'm, and I'm kind of stuck there? Will be a, there be a group at Rossmore? What about doing this in a safe way in light of the pandemic? Come back next week for part two of The Birdhouse, and I will address those questions and many more. But let me close with this thought. Here's a big thought. And I mean this. The best thing that we can offer you here at Hillside is a birdhouse. It's the best thing. Worship services are critically important. And I am committed, Daniel's committed, Jariah's committed to keep sweating to making them the most compelling, the most nourishing, the most smooth from a production standpoint that we possibly can. Worship services are really important. However, even those with the most inspiring sermons, the most stirring music, the smoothest production, even those things aren't enough. They're not enough for the transformation that light bearing really requires. And that's why it's important that we meet together in groups as the essential companion of the worship service. Last month, we went on a short camping trip as a family to Donner State Park. I was only there one night, it's been a very, very busy season. But Allison and the boys were there for three, along with her parents and brother and sister-in-law. And the 24 hours that I was camping with the family, there was the normal discomfort that you could imagine. Okay, if you've ever car camped, the bugs, the dust, the lost sunglasses. Okay, You know how these things work. But on the whole, it was such a distinct joy. It really was. It was a joy to be with my family, sharing updates, telling stories, playing Ticket to Ride, you know, under the lantern light, eating delicious food like the grilled sausages slathered in peppers that the boys Uncle Ryan and Aunt Lauren made for us all. There's really nothing quite like a family around a campsite. The momentary discomforts notwithstanding. Okay, what's the point? Here's what it is. If groupless Christianity, solo Christianity, is like hiking alone in the Wanangata Valley with the, the menace of the button man always lurking, birdhouse Christianity, group-centered Christianity, you know what that's like? It's like camping with your family. It's deep, and it's safe, and it touches the heart as hearts connect over food and prayer and study and sometimes tears and trying to figure out together what in the world the living Lord is saying to us in this passage or this exciting intervention or this painful interruption. And again, the, the birdhouse Camping with the family rather than hiking alone, the small group, it really is, it's the best thing that we can offer you here. Nothing ultimately will be richer 
for you. And more and more as the years go on, I mean, without letting the get our foot off the gas one bit in terms of sermon quality or, or s- service production or musical quality or church-wide events like Magi, without letting up on that one bit, I hope that nourishing, heart-connecting group life will migrate to the center of our shared life. Let me pray for us. Father, right now in my imagination, I'm moving ahead to Sunday, November 14th, the Sunday that will bring to a close this 10-week home group initiative that we're introducing. And I want to thank you in advance for the good that you are going to pour out on our church family as we join together to live the reality of our brother and sisterness in a new way. And Father, I thank you for the friendships that are going to form between hillsiders who at this moment don't even know each other, but will emerge after 10 weeks bonded at the heart. Thank you for the spiritual sculpting that you're going to accomplish in each one of us as we talk together and study together, and eat together, and laugh together, and discern together. And thank you for how much better we will be equipped as a church for being light in the world as a result of our Fall Groups initiative. We love you. We praise you as the family that we are. And we do this in the name of our King, for whom everything exists. Amen. love you, Lord. Stand together. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able Oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in the darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God. All right, every voice, come on, lift it up. All my life you have been faithful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. the goodness of God. All right, try this right here. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. <laughs> yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. One more time, come on. Your goodness is running, it's running after me. Yeah, come on. Your goodness.
darkness is running out, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Yeah. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Uh, every voice, come on. Oh my life. All right, tell him, tell him, sing to him, come on. Oh, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, who I will sing yeah, of the goodness of God. been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God of the goodness of God. Oh, just to judge him. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so. With every breath that I am, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing the goodness of God. If uh, you're interested in uh, finding out about groups, when they're happening, uh, when they're offered, which night of the week, you can start that investigation today in the back by the Information Center. We have lots of information about our groups. Pastor Jenny will be there to answer your questions. We're going to be picking up this conversation next week in the Birdhouse Part 2, but it's not too early to start signing up if you would like. That's right. So head back there if you want. And your benediction is inspired by Psalm 57, verse 1. And here's what it is. May this week be one in which you find yourself overwhelmed with the goodness of God underneath his protective wings. God bless you, and we will see you soon.